Good evening, everybody. It's great to be back here again with you. If you're visiting with us, please know that we're blessed that you've chosen to, to take this time and spend this time uh, with us. And I hope that uh, once we've concluded, that you'll stick around and, and let us say hi to, to one another. For those of you who are watching online or for those who might have come across this, once again, I'm grateful that you are, and I am grateful that you did. Tonight, we're going to continue our Momentum Matters series that we started together back on April the 21st. And the last time that I was blessed to be here, we looked at Jonah's prayer and the belly of the fish. We mentioned how starting a prayer streak can help build positive momentum in our lives. We discuss praying with more explanation. We discuss praying with more emotion. And we also discuss praying with more expectation. So let me ask, if you were here then, let me ask you, how is your prayer life? I hope that you are able to start, and I hope you are able to maintain that spiritual habit of prayer. If not, then there's no greater time to start or renew that streak than, than now, than tonight. But I got to be honest with you. And maybe some of you can relate. My prayer life is like a roller coaster. And as that a ride ascends to the peak of that roller coaster, my prayer life is pretty good. Okay? Because if you think about it, that ride to the top is relatively slow and steady, which equates to everything is going well. And it seems like as soon as I crest over that peak, gravity takes over, and then my prayer life is not that consistent anymore, right? <laughs> which equates to there's a million things I've got to do. I'm being pulled in a, vi a variety of directions, chaos. On Thursday night of work camp, we talked about prayer with our youth. And we surmised that, and I asked them, you know, what do you think might be the number one cause of our prayer life distractions? And we surmised that maybe these things right here could be a good reason why we get distracted so easily uh, in our prayer life. But church, I got to tell you, prayer is only one piece to the puzzle of what goes into maintaining a spiritual habit streak. Tonight, we're going to discuss another uh, spiritual habit and how building and maintaining that spiritual habit streak is critical in building and maintaining positive momentum if we are not already doing so. The spiritual habit of Bible reading. If you've ever played, if you've ever attended, if you ever listened on the radio or watched an athletic event, then you most likely have recognized when one team who had the momentum in their game lost their momentum. You might have noticed or heard about a series of events or a series of plays that caused the momentum to shift from one team to the other. As a sports fan, I can think of numerous examples of this momentum shifting. Um, as a former athlete, I've experienced both sides of that momentum shifting feeling. Some good and some bad. When the 2015 men's NCAA National Championship basketball game, the number one team of their conference, the Duke Blue Devils, was playing the number one team in their conference, the Wisconsin Badgers. The first half ended with both teams tied 31-31. to So it's kind of hard to see who had momentum going into the second half of that game. But when the final whistle had blown, Duke had won the national championship of a score of 68 to 63, a difference of only five points. But the win was not attributed as a team win. Duke's win was attributed to a freshman, Grayson Allen, who went on a scoring streak. And this streak changed the entire momentum of the game and ultimately led to a national title. Dude's coach, the legendary Mike Skrzeszewski, said this, We were kind of dead in the water. We were nine points down, and Grayson just put us on his back. So the coach, 
attributed their national title win to a freshman who went on the streak. The 2015 National Championship banner hanging in the rafters of Duke started with a change in momentum. Their championship rings started with a change in momentum. And we have to realize that momentum can make a massive impact in our lives. Just look at that guy right there. You know that's a massive impact. You see it in sports. You see it in fitness. You see it in your education. You see it in politics. You see it uh, at work. You know, there's momentum all around us, and there's momentum in our life as well. Okay? And as we mentioned the last time, with every decision we make, we are either creating positive momentum or we're creating negative momentum. For instance, when you choose to set an alarm clock, wake up early and read your Bible first thing or begin your day in prayer and meditation. Okay, that win is going to build momentum and repeat over and over again. Now, that positive momentum might shift throughout the day but at least it begins positively. If you start the habit of lifting weights or exercising, your strength is going to improve. If you start the habit of writing daily, your creativity is going to improve. If you start the habit of praying for your family, for your friends, for the lost, your relationships are going to improve. Every single big win starts with small habits. But the same goes with every big failure. They also begin with small habits. We've got to recognize that our momentum is building. And whether it's building in a positive or negative direction depends on what we do and the choices that we make. So which direction do we choose? No, the world tells us to choose whatever makes us happy. Do whatever you want, right? It's your life and it's short. But what did Jesus tell us? If anyone would come after me, let him do what, church? Exactly. Yeah, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Luke 9, 23. Make no mistake about it, church. We do have a choice. I would encourage us to build positive momentum and break negative habits by listening and following the one who overcame the world. Tonight, we're going to look at a very short verse that has huge implications. It's going to be on your screen. If you want to turn to it, turn to Psalm 119, verse 105. Psalm 119, verse 105. Your word is a what, church? A lamp. Yep. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Anybody know who authored this verse? David. David's 14-word simple comparison of Scripture to a lamp reveals very powerful and very practical truth about the Bible, and it's this. The Bible helps us to see life clearly. Just as the lamp allows us to see our surroundings clearly when it's dark, God's Word helps us to see clearly and helps us to understand how to live life to the fullest. God's word helps us to see Jesus clearly. The Bible helps us to clearly see how to follow him. Jesus is not lost in a dense fog with a dense fog advisory warning, hoping you might be able to find him. He's standing there in the wide open with arms wide open, anxiously waiting for us to run and jump into. Building that positive momentum of Bible reading teaches us several things. It teaches us, one, who God is. It teaches us how he sees us. And it also teaches us who we're created to be. Learning about the creator helps us to understand more about his wonderful creation that we're blessed to be a part of. There's always going to be mysteries. And there's always going to be unanswered questions in this world. But we will understand our lives to the fullest when we look through the lens of God's word. When we start and maintain that streak of daily Bible reading. George, would you agree that the Bible gives us guidance and direction? Of course it does. 
You ever been in a cave and had the lights completely turned off? Those of you who are outdoorsy, have you ever been in the middle of the woods in the pitch black darkness without a headlamp or a flashlight? Have you ever spent the night in a new place and woken up in the middle of the night for whatever reason? You know, getting around the dark is hard and can be scary when you don't know where you are. And if you're like me, you do that slow motion, you shuffle your feet, um, mummy walk, right? Because you're afraid to step on something, to trip on something. You stick your arms down and do that slow motion circles to try to find the wall with a light switch. Um, you know, navigating in the dark is tough and it's potentially dangerous. So when David says that God's word is a light to his path, he is saying that scripture takes away the fear and the anxiety of walking through life in the dark. If you and I, if we have a relationship with Jesus, and if we are uh, ensured that our steps are in line with the footsteps of Christ, did you know we will never have to go through life in the dark? That's good news right there. We may not know exactly where our path is going all the time, but we know that we are safe and we are secure if our next step is in line with God's will. But in order to know what God's will is, we have to open and we have to be in the word. We have to read our Bible. The Bible gives us an outline for life. And I've always liked hearing that the Bible stood for basic instructions before leaving earth. It makes so much sense. God's will for us revealed through his word is not complicated. There is no letter C for complicated instructions. Those basic instructions before leaving earth allows us to uncover our purpose and, and our identity. The Bible points us where we're meant to go in this life and eternally. The Bible gives us direction. There's a lady by the name of Amanda Real from the Harvard Business Review pointed out that the average adult makes uh, about 33,000 to 35,000 total decisions each day. I don't know how she came up with that, but based on her research, that's what she came up with. Now, many of these decisions happen automatically and simultaneously through the information we've subconsciously stored um, in our heads about what is good and what is bad. So for you and I, what are our choices? Choice one, if we're not careful, the streaks that we have and the streaks that we develop and allow can make our life a mess. We have to recognize, church, that negative streaks are really, really powerful if we allow them to be. Single decisions and single mistakes can quickly become bad habits which can quickly derail our life if we are not cautious. Now, there might be some who will, but most people do not just wake up one day and decide to rob a bank. They might start with stealing something from a friend or an acquaintance, then stealing from a store, and then it escalates from there. But as it relates to us, if we're not careful, every bad habit and toys can get easier until we have a full-on streak taking us down a spiral with no end in sight. And it's sad, but there have actually been criminals who have committed a series of heinous crimes that once they were caught, were relieved and actually thanked the police for catching them because they did not know how to stop their negative choices. Now, I'm not saying we are like them, but do we have bad sin habits that desperately need to be broken? Kind of like what Stephen was talking about this morning. It might not be robbing banks or stealing from stores or committing hating his crimes. But what about sinful thoughts? What about being influenced by the wrong people? What about looking at things we shouldn't be looking at? What about saying things we shouldn't be saying? What about building out a complex series of lies? You know, the list can go on and on. And all of these negative habits can quickly snowball and take us places we never thought we want to be or never thought we would be. And before we realize it, we're caught in a web, we're caught in a trap, and we convince ourselves that there's no way of escaping. And since we've convinced ourselves that there's no way of escaping, we give up. And we don't try to fight our conscience anymore to do what is right. We feel buried in sin. And church, that's not where God wants you or I to be. 
But I got some good news for us. No matter how, uh, how deep our sin gets, it can never get deep enough to where the blood of Jesus cannot reach. So that is choice number one, allowing the habit of negative streaks take control of our lives. Choice number two, our streaks can lead to success. This is when we strive to put positive momentum in our lives. When we set up streaks to get more involved in church. When we set up streaks to read our Bible. When we set up streaks to pray. Doing so will all lead towards our ultimate success and help us build that spiritual growth. If we want to see some positive differences in our life, then we've got to start making small changes now and don't wait until tomorrow. Don't wait till later. I've always heard it say that small decisions are the hinges on which the door of our future swing, especially our spiritual future. Let's make sure that they swing in a positive direction. That's why tonight I'm encouraging uh, to start that streak of of reading our Bible every day. I hope you're up to date on your daily Bible reading. I got to be honest with you. I need to get caught up, right? But once again, just like our prayer streak, if we're not caught up, there's no better time to start than today, right? This small routine will pay off in every aspect of our life. If we are having a hard time loving people, we got to get in God's word. Because falling in love with God's word is going to help us fall in love with trying to reach the lost. It will also help us to build those positive relationships. If we're struggling with sin, we got to read God's word. Grow close to Jesus and we will go far from sin. Not completely away, but we will go far from sin. If we face insecurity and inadequacy in our lives, I would encourage us to read God's word. And listen to what he has to say to us. You and I are going to discover a life-changing truth. There is a real God who really does love you and really wants the best for your life and really does want you and I to spend eternity with him. That's good news. Beginning the streak of Bible reading allows God's word to change us, allows us to shape us. It will help us become more resilient. And as you read the Bible, you and I, we receive God's message for our life. But it's amazing how those words will mean different things to you at different stages of life. Church, they say it only takes 21 days to create a new habit. So here's my challenge for us. If we have not already done so, start reading your Bible today. Start that streak today, along with that, that prayer habit today. Let's make time to turn off the television. Let's make time to turn on God. Let's make time to, to stop paying attention to our phones and start listening to God's words. Because once again, church, momentum matters. Let's digitally or diligently, there's the right word, work on building positive momentum through prayer and through Bible reading. Because momentum does matter, and it does matter. Prayer and Bible reading is so important, so important for our lives. Tonight, if we can help you begin that positive momentum streak through prayers, or if tonight is the night you decide to begin your daily walk uh, with the Lord through uh, through your baptism, then we would love to do that tonight. If we can help you in any way, please come now as we stand and as we sing.